It doesn't compare at all. I don't think, frankly, that there's any comparison in terms of frequency or egregiousness of dishonesty between Donald Trump and anyone, Republican or Democratic, in, in Washington life. In terms of frequency, uh, Biden's number of false claims in year one was somewhere in the dozens. You could add probably dozens more if you counted misleading or lacking in context claims. Trump was over a thousand false claims in year one and was over 3,000 false claims in year two. So there's no comparison. But that said, I don't think that means we, we wave Biden's away, say they don't matter. I think all false claims from, from the president matter. All these facts matter. And we can't let the, the previous presidency of Donald Trump set the bar so low for every subsequent president that the bar just doesn't exist anymore. So, Daniel, what were some of the important ones that President Biden said? Yeah, he, he made false claims about a variety of important topics from Afghanistan to the economy to the COVID-19 pandemic, uh, immigration, made one on ESPN in a high profile interview about the new Georgia voting law. I think some of the Afghanistan ones were among the most egregious. You know, he said in, in an interview that he opposed that war from the beginning. He did not, although he eventually turned against it. Um, he said that, you know, what interest does the U.S. have in Afghanistan with al-Qaeda gone? Al-Qaeda is certainly degraded in Afghanistan, but it certainly was not gone at the time. On the economy, he, he repeatedly misstated what experts had projected about his own plan. So, for example, he repeated that the firm Moody's Analytics said that passing his American jobs plan would produce 16 million additional jobs. Well, either he was misreading or, or misstating what Moody said. It was actually a projection of 2.7 million additional jobs. So a big difference. So we had a number, a number of those. And then again, uh, immigration, voting laws, sometimes gun laws. Uh, he made false claims about a, a variety of things. So uh, Daniel, what would you say were his perhaps most memorable false claims? It's, to me, I mean, this is subjective, but to me, the most memorable ones were often the most trivial ones, the, the ones where he would depart from his text and invent or embellish something about his own past. And we, we saw that last week where in a voting rights speech in Georgia, he claimed in passing that he had, he had been arrested. He suggested in the context of the civil rights movement, there is some, some record, some evidence of him participating in some civil rights activities back in his youth, uh, but no record of any arrest. He said a couple times that, that he used to drive an 18-wheeler or, or a big truck. Uh, he told this to, to uh, you know, at a Mack Trucks facility to, to students studying truck maintenance. There's no evidence he ever did that, although he did once have a part-time job uh, driving a school bus. And then he also made a couple to Jewish uh, leaders in the Jewish community while trying to emphasize his connection to that community. Listen to something he said about his relationship with the late Israeli Prime Minister Golda Meir. I have known every every prime minister well since Golda Meir, including Golda Meir. And during the Six-Day War, I had an opportunity to, uh, she invited me to come over because I was going to be the liaison between she and the Egyptians about the Suez and so on and so forth. So there are two things wrong with this. One, he actually met with Meir uh, weeks before the Yom Kippur War in 1973, not during the Six Day War in 1967. More importantly, there is no evidence that this, uh, you know, this this uh, senior Prime Minister of Israel ever had any intention of using a 30-year-old rookie U.S. senator who had never been to Israel before and who the Israeli government thought of as inexperienced as some sort of regional liaison with a key adversary. So yes, that's a story about something that happened decades ago. Yes, it's peripheral you know, to policy matters. But it's fascinating to me because the president you know, chose, ad-libbed, chose to bring this up uh, and ended up you know, hurting his reputation for, for accuracy, hurting his credibility you know, rather than, than achieving whatever, uh, whatever aim he had by, by bringing it up in the first place.